So we're here to talk through this classic Sudoku by Svarup. It's got a very nice theme, both the borderless set of clues, but also this checkerboard pattern leads to a lot of situations which you see in some Sudoku puzzles where you have some pretty powerful eliminations. For instance, this plus shape of empty cells in the middle has a situation where any digit in the empty row leaves behind potential pair of clues above, and it looks like this two and three actually leave behind a set group that has to be in these two cells, and that looks like it quickly gives me a deduction like a three is up here and a two is down here uh, by the eliminations from this pair, and that lets me fill in one more cell here. The extension of doing that in an obvious space like this pair is to come up to these larger boxes and see that if you have a cross-hatch uh, group, you'll get a similar situation where this vertical elimination, this horizontal elimination, leave just behind clues in one row. And I see that the same two and three digits do the same uh, kind of symmet symmetric elimination up in these spots. Um, th these threes give me two more threes over here. Um, I actually can use these place digits to get this set, and since I haven't done it yet, I'll put those digits down here. Still some more to do, it looks like. Um, one thing to do is to look at this center column. It now has a 596 group uh, with these marks. There's a 6 in here as well. The six comes up to one of these spots. The digit looks interesting as a five, and I see one other five in the grid, and so that has the same crosshatch elimination. It ends up putting a two and a five in the top space, which forces a pair, which forces this placement of the seven, sorry, of the six. Uh, there's a seven in one of these two cells, then there's an eight in one of these cells, and there's a one in the remaining space, this eight note makes another eight note down here, just going through my standard Sudoku solving style here. Another thing you always try to do at the beginning of puzzles, look for in groups of three rows or three columns for repeated digits. So these fours and these sevens look pretty obvious. I want to move over to the right. And this seven here uh, leaves just one spot in the space. These two fours leave this. The seven comes down. Now having placed these, there's a question of can I do more to fill in this box. This one coming across leaves behind a one-two pair, but this one below cancels everything else. So this is one and two, left with eight, six in this box. Looks like we end up with something like five, nine over here, six, nine over here. There's a one in one of these cells. There should be some more I can do on this side, just based on these digits I placed. And um, this was a 2-3 group. After I made this note, I could have made these notes. But the 2s now cancel this other cell. And so all cells but this one I'm, I'm showing here are eliminated from being a 2. And so that fills in all of these pretty quickly. There are still this one note I can put in. Nothing around the fours, but there's a five note here that may be helpful. Nothing around the six, nothing around the eight, nothing around the nine. So we've marked as much as we can on this right side. So we're going to have to come back to think through where is the next potential space to make progress in the puzzle. And one thing that uh, is drawing my attention a little bit is seeing some of the digits in this uh, row, which are 1, 5, and 8 left over. Um, this is 1, 8, and this is all of 1, 5, 8, and also this column, I see 1, 5, 9. These are very similar sets, and so as in their intersection points, there could be something going on. So I'm just going to write some of these pairs out. There's not yet anything like a deadly pattern that's going to force some of these things, but you see there's a lot of constraints around fives, ones, and nines. So one thing I'll do at a time like this is just make sure I've scanned where those digits can go. These are the ones I have in the grid. There's an either or here. There's an either or here. I've got 
three choices for the ones up top and a fair amount of flexibility there, so that doesn't look so promising. Looking at the fives, I've got two fives and a five note here, so what that actually does is says there's a five in one of these cells, a five in some of those cells, but the thing I'm noting right now is that I actually have a, a, a space where the five and the eighth row has to be in one of these two cells, and so that's going to quickly look like actually give me a whole lot of progress in this puzzle because it will eliminate the five from what was a five nine set that now forces these digits to go as I'm entering them. Uh, the one five is now only a five, so this is has to be a five. We don't want to overrun our progress, so let's just come back and make sure with the digits we placed we do all we can with them. So we put in some ones. This one moves up the remaining eight note, which puts over the seven. Got another seven down here. These two sevens work together to say the only remaining seven can be in the seventh row over here. Which puts a seven up here. We've got four, six, eight to place, sorry, four, four, eight, nine. Uh, to place the eight is uh, the last in this row, but we get four and nine. And a six in the remaining cell in that column. One and four were in these cells. Can we do more up here with these place digits? Uh, four, nine, eight, there's an eight in one of these cells. This is, uh, there's a six in one of these cells. These sixes mark off the seventh and ninth columns, so the remaining space for another six is right here. We have an eight, nine to still place in the spot. It looks like both of these cells are okay for that. Um, coming back to the ones, when I place this one, I could place this one, which looks like it's gonna force a whole lot of the rest of the grid. Here I'm just working off the notes I've already placed in the grid. If you're not familiar with this notation, the idea is when you have an either or choice of two cells a digit can go into that I mark them both. And then when I make progress in the puzzle, essentially writing a seven, it intersects with one of my notes and I can quickly force the remaining placement. This is five as a last digit in this column. Place over here, four will be the last digit in this row. Does that then leads to needing to have one up top. The six comes down and interacts with the six eight note. This eight interacts with the eight note. There's an eight nine to place down at the bottom. These two nines come up. The five is below, the six is here, and the four is below, and the nine is up. So it's not necessarily a super hard puzzle um, in the set of the kinds of steps that you take. We, we don't often feature puzzles on the site that need, say, a Y-wing or swordfish or more complex geometry. This is just a really elegant classic puzzle that uses pairs and eliminations quite well. And the hardest step, which I ran into, looked to be finding that uh, there were exclusions of the five digit five in all of these spaces, which put a five here, which left then a naked signal, single, excuse me, in the cell that what I'd had marked as being a five nine option for this column actually only has nine as an option and that puts the rest into the grid. So hopefully you got a little bit of a sense of how I approached trying this puzzle of how I look through a puzzle, how I you know, sort of look at the geometries for places to go and how I use notations to track things. And when I got a sense that one, one in five from this 158 row and 159 triple could be things to look at. I was deliberate in exploring those options and found that hard step with this five note here. Uh, with that, uh, hope you enjoyed uh, this video and we'll see you again soon.